What are the craziest moments in UFC history? The exact moments you can pinpoint that stand out in your memory. For this list, it's all about the singular moment. I wouldn't include Robbie Lawler versus Roy McDonald as an entire fight under this criteria, but the moment where they stood and stared at each other at the end of round four would fit, and in this case it gets an honourable mention. So let's just get into it. These, in my opinion, and I'm certain that I'll miss a few, are the top 20 craziest moments in UFC history. And to kick things off, we're going to take a look at one of the craziest submissions we've ever seen in mixed martial arts. In fact, technique for technique, you're not going to see another sub like this. It wasn't about the context, like some of the others that may make an appearance on this list. No, this was all technique. The fact that Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson decided to attempt to combine a suplex and an armbar in the first place was pretty wild, but the fact that he landed it made this moment something else entirely. Matt Hughes versus Frank Trigg 2 was one of those fights that I really wish I'd seen live in the arena. Matt Hughes took a hard shot to the groin, went down, and nearly got finished by way of rear naked choke. And then somehow, in some way, he escaped and in one swift movement, picked up Trigg, ran him across the octagon, and slammed him to the ground. The win came shortly after, but man, this is Dana White's favourite fight in any combat sport, and that should tell you everything you need to know. This next one speaks for itself. Who knows how many times Joaquin Buckley had practiced this exact exact technique, but once Impa Kasanga and I caught that kick, Buckley's quick thinking allowed him to score a knockout that has no equal in MMA history in terms of its aesthetic brilliance. This one barely seems real, it, it barely seems real now. Randy Couture beating Tim Sylvia in the fashion that he did was all about the context. Couture had already retired at this point, and despite declaring his intention to return to the cage to fight to win a championship for the fifth time, he was 43 years old and expected to fall at the hands of the champion, Tim Sylvia. So when Couture went out there and knocked him down immediately and proceeded to dominate for 25 minutes, it was truly a joyous and celebratory occasion for the sport as a whole. You'll just never see another Randy Couture, that's for sure. This one is a personal favourite of mine. Big Nog and Antonio Rodrigo Noguera had Frank Mir exactly where he wanted him, stunned, struggling and with his neck right there for the submission, but somehow Mir survived, reversing position and locking up a Kimura on one of the division's greatest ever grapplers. And and when Big Nog refused to tap out of some pride, Muir cranked and cranked until Noguera's arm snapped in two. One of the greatest submission sequences in UFC history in my opinion. I don't think we've ever seen a spinning kick as clean as the first wheel kick in UFC history. Edson Barboza tapped into something truly special when he absolutely destroyed Terry Etim with this technique in the third round of their fight of the night winning bout. This knockout is just about as slick a finish as you will ever see in any combat sport. An easy top 5 knockout out of all time pick. Lyoto Machida is perhaps the most devoted karate specialist to ever take part in mixed martial arts competition, so for him to bust out a move pulled straight from the pages of the Karate Kid's script on a legend like Randy Couture, the five time champion, made for one of the greatest knockout moments in the promotion's history. Iconic knockouts like this are few and far between, and Lyoto's was one that has truly stood the test of time. Michael Bisping had a lot working against him when he signed on the dotted line to take on Luke Rockhold at UFC 199. The fight was taken on short notice, Rockhold had already beaten him in the past in dominant fashion, and just on paper the count didn't appear to have any real stylistic advantages over the champion, so when Bisping went in there and KO'd his overly confident opponent in just under a round, it was a truly joyous underdog moment that absolutely no one saw coming, especially in that fashion. Conor McGregor was truly at the peak of his powers when the time came for him to take on the hard-nosed veteran, Nate Diaz, on short notice at UFC 196, and early on things appeared to be going to plan for the featherweight champion, but Nate's defensive prowess and iron chin proved to be Conor's undoing. By round two, Nate was still right there in McGregor's face, and with his opponent rapidly fatiguing, Diaz began to take over, eventually stunning Conor on the feet and tapping him shortly after with that now legendary rear naked choke sequence. Beating an all-time great like Anderson Silva by way of finish is always going to produce a truly crazy moment, but the way that Chris Weidman knocked out Silva was just perfect. Living by the sword and dying by the sword is kind of the perfect way to describe what happened to the spider here. He was caught taunting, caught playing the type of high stakes game that had already endeared him to the masses, and overall this was as shocking a fight conclusion as you will ever see. On a quick side note, if you're enjoying this content, be sure to let us know in the comments section below, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the like button if the mood strikes. Anyway, back to the video. 
Seeing a front kick to the face like this one was just about as conclusive a proof as you could ever see that mixed martial arts striking was getting somewhere. But it was the added context of who Anderson Silva was beating and how he used this technique to pierce the conventional Muay Thai defenses of Vitor Belfort. Overall, it was just a beautiful finish and one of the most iconic images in the sport's history. Yair Rodriguez's last second knockout of Chan Sun Jung was a truly insane moment on so many levels. Not only was Yair down on the score, cards, not only did he manage to crack one of the most famously tough chins in the history of the sport and do it at 4 minutes 59 seconds of round 5, but he also did it with a technique that we've never even seen attempted before or since, an easy top 10 all time moment. Ronda Rousey's stock has truly taken some big hits in recent years, but we really did not know what we know now about her shortcomings in the striking department. To see Holly Holm piece her up like that was just stunning to behold. Every shot she landed received a rapturous reception from the audience, and when the killing blow came, that legendary head kick, it was an explosive moment. For years, Matt Serra's first round knockout of Georges St. Pierre was pointed to as the gold standard for upset victories. The most unlikely challenger imaginable, the veteran Serra, taking full advantage of his one final shot at UFC Championship Gold. We have watched more thorough upset victories from guys like TJ Dillashaw or the aforementioned Holly Holm, but this flash knockdown and the subsequent knockout sequence came out of nowhere. Leon Edwards had long been seen as one of the most underrated fighters in the sport before he stepped in there for his first title shot. But by the time that 25th minute came, this unheralded challenger produced the most insane comeback you will ever see, head kicking the pound for pound king just one minute out from a certain defeat. It was one of the best KOs of the year, but even if it hadn't been so damn pretty, that's an all time great championship comeback moment right there. You don't just produce the fastest knockout in UFC history in a matchup of such importance and not get into the top 5. Add in the context of the beef between Ben Askren and Jorge Masvidal, plus the fact that Ben was an unbeaten icon of the welterweight division, once seen as the greatest fighter outside of the UFC, and yeah, it really puts what Jorge did into perspective. This was also as brutal a knockout as you'll ever see in the sport, and the fact that it took just 5 seconds to put that much damage on someone takes it to another level entirely. It's crazy that a two-fight rivalry produced two different moments that had to get a place on this list. For as wild as it was to see Anderson Silva getting knocked out by Chris Weidman, seeing his leg snap in the rematch was just a different thing entirely. Between the three most high-profile leg breaks in UFC history, this, Weidman's own shocking leg snap years later, and then Conor McGregor's in the Poirier trilogy fight, none left us feeling quite as empty as Weidman Silva too. Fast knockouts are not too uncommon in this sport, but to see a decade-long run of dominance collapse like Jose Aldo's did at UFC 194 against Conor McGregor, that was a truly wild scene to behold. To knock out an all-time great like that in their prime just has never happened, and it was a win that raised McGregor's star power to another level entirely, easily the wildest knockout in UFC title fight history. Habib Nurmagomedov's pre-fight demeanor in the build-up to UFC 229 could best be described as calm and confident. Conor McGregor did his best to pierce the Eagles' mental armor, but to no avail. However, once the deed was done and Khabib had locked in his fourth round submission, he flew into a rage when he saw Dylan Danis still jawing at him. It was a post-fight scene that has absolutely no equal in sports history, and the fact that it came during the most watched pay-per-view of all time made it that bit crazier. Finally, we come to the number one spot, a pick that I went back and forth on a few times. But in my mind, the whole context of Anderson Silva's fifth round submission over Chael Sonnen makes it the craziest moment on this list. All of those years of dominance, the magical title reign that would eventually lead him to the longest winning streak in the promotion's history, and it was about to come falling down at the hands of the most obnoxious challenger possible. Silva had no right to win that fight, it should have been Chael, and yet he somehow found his way to the most dramatic late submission imaginable. Anyway, that'll just about do it for this one. But how do you think we did with our picks? I'm sure I definitely missed a few of them here or there, so do let me know in the comments below. And if you want to like the video and subscribe, that would be great. As always, thank you for watching.